Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Chainsaw Reacts podcast, episode number 43. And today guys, we are covering three topics and those topics in order are number one, Legends of Tomorrow Star City 2046 episode review. I'm going to get into my positives and my negatives. The review will be kind of like my Arrow and Flash reviews I do each week, but not video format, just audio version. There'll be pictures up during the segment that are going to be relating to what I'm talking about. So you'll be able to skip around if you want to get to a particular thing. I'll be talking about it. I'll cover my positives first in the review and then I'll get to my negatives in the review so there's that anyways topic number two is going to be zoom has been revealed I'm going to go into the reveal my speculations and what I think they're going to be doing on the rest of the season for season two of the flash regarding to zoom now topic number three is going to be the man in the mask talk about also what happened with the zoom reveal and how that's going to relate back to the man in the mask and how that's all going to deal out so basically a lot of speculation and topic two and topic three so I'm really excited so that further ado guys let's get into it now topic number one which is Legends of Tomorrow Star City 2046 episode review now overall before I get into you know the positives and negatives all that kind of stuff I do want to start off by saying I really enjoyed this episode I have some critiques which I'll get to but I felt like overall they did a great job representing Star City they could have done a little more but I'll get to all that kind of stuff but I felt like it was a really good episode I'm glad they did this episode early on and they didn't wait off and go well let's air Star City 2046 at like episode 10 or something like that they decided well not immediately but let's get a couple episodes in and then we'll air the Star City City one. So I'm glad that they waited a little bit, but they got right to it as fast as they could. And it felt like overall it was a decent episode and I fairly enjoyed it. Now, let almost, like I said, I was going to start off my positives. So I'm going to get to my positives first and then I'll get to my negatives. Now understand some of the positives I have for the episode, there is a negative thing with it as well. So I'll be going back to particular things that I say is a positive and I'll go to other ways how it was also a negative to me personally so there is that okay so let's get to the first positive which of course is freaking Oliver Queen old green arrow one arm I really enjoyed this because obviously it's a nod to the Dark Knight Returns Oliver Queen green arrow from the comics it's really cool to see that but obviously they changed it up Superman doesn't rip his arm off it was chopped off by Grant Wilson aka Deathstroke's son, which is now the new Deathstroke, and so, uh, but overall, I felt like that they represented Oliver Queen in a very cool way, and it was awesome to kind of see him just being in the Arrow Cave, and just kind of being, you know, away, and then when he, whenever Sarah, Connor, Hawk, and Rip Hunter infiltrate uh, the lair, essentially, and then he obviously is like, get out of here, and he's being an old man with the beard, and all that kind of stuff, and all the white in his hair, and white in his beard, but overall, he recognizes Sarah, and then they have a little conversation, so it was really cool to see Oliver older, but obviously you could tell that, you know, he's not out of shape. He's just, you know, kind of hiding and just being, you know, he's brooding and he's, he just disappeared from the world. Everyone thought he was dead. He's not dead. But what I really liked is at the end when he actually put on the Green Arrow suit and actually fired some arrows, fought the younger Deathstroke, the son of the original Deathstroke, and it was cool to see him still have his chops down, firing those arrows like crazy. It was just really cool to see an older Oliver Queen kicking ass and taking names. So I really enjoyed the fact that they finally got to it. They were building up to it. I'm glad that the, it actually ended and it actually worked out for the best because I really thought, like, wait a minute, are they going to kill Oliver Queen? Like, is the new Deathstroke, is he going to kill Oliver Queen? I would hate it so much. Thankfully, that they did not go that route because they could have easily killed him off and say, this is the death of Oliver Queen, which I'll get to another positive how, you know, ultimately it doesn't matter. But I felt like that, you know, for a second, I thought they were going to kill him. They didn't. And ultimately, they end with the episode with Oliver Queen getting back into fighting crime alongside with Connor Hawk, which is pretty badass. So let's get to the second second positive which is Connor Hawk. I really enjoyed this character. I didn't know what to expect when they teased him at the end of episode 5 when they crash landed into Star City and then you see the green arrow pop up and it was like, "Oh, Oliver, it's okay. Uh we're legends, remember?" And then it turns out it's Connor Hawk. I don't know about any legends. Psh, fires an arrow. Um 
But I like the reveal that Connor Hawk is actually John Diggle Jr., John Diggle's son. Now that's a di that, that's a um, that's a that's a basically a detour from the comics. I'm trying to think of the word a detour from the comics because in the New Fifty Two he's just an African American guy, a kid. I'm not really sure if he's Oliver's son in the New Fifty Two, but they change him from being a white Connor Hawk to a African American Connor Hawk. But what I like is that they tied it in to where it's John Diggle's son, but they never really reference. I mean. It's not really a big critique, a big negative, but the fact that he said, I'm Connor Hawk, but he never says why he's calling himself Connor Hawk. I mean, he says, I'm Connor Hawk because I don't want to take my father's name. You know, I didn't save him. I don't deserve to be a John Diggle. But it's like, well, why did you pick Connor Hawk, though? There's no explanation for that. But it felt like seeing the new Green Arrow, Connor Hawk, it was awesome. He kicked some mass. There were some cool moments, and uh, he actually fought. Deathstroke a little bit, which is pretty cool. And overall, seeing him interact with Sarah and Rip Hunter was pretty cool as well. And I like the fact that they gave that character a little bit of development. A nice surprise, like I mentioned, about John Diggle Jr. So I felt like Connor Hawk was a great positive to the show. And I hope to see him maybe again at some point, maybe Season 2 of Legends. I don't know, but I like the fact that they had that little tidbit and he was pretty badass and he essentially is still going to be the green arrow i'm guessing that oliver will just be the arrow or just be helping him out i don't know what's happening but essentially they say that connor hawk is going to be the green arrow continuing on in that timeline now speaking of timelines the third positive i want to get to is rip hunter talking to sarah basically twice in case you miss it the first time the timeline that they are seeing is not set in stone this is a timeline that could potentially happen it's not set in stone so let's say hypothetically at the end of the episode Deathstroke the new Deathstroke Grant Wilson the son of Deathstroke kills Oliver Queen okay that's not the death of Oliver Queen per se in quotations because the timeline is not set in stone. The timeline can always be changed because what was said in the episode, even by Oliver Queen himself, once the Adam, Ray Palmer, and Sarah, the Black Canary, now the White Canary, left in 2016 to be on the Legends show and left, you know time and they were not around that they were that they were not there to help Oliver and Team Arrow essentially stop the uprising from Grant Wilson the new Deathstroke and his minions like they were unable to stop it because the Adam and Sarah was not there so essentially they're saying that at this current point the fact that they both are on the wave rider time traveling and all that kind of stuff that they're unable to prevent it so basically until they complete the mission which is kill Vandal Savage this is a possible outlook of the timeline because they are not there to save it. So it's very interesting that because you see where when they were in the past and something they did affected the future, right? Well, in the future, they they could also affect the timeline going back, which is really wonky and crazy. But I'm glad that they mentioned it not just once, but twice from Rip Hunter to Sarah. And even Oliver says that you guys are not around, that the timeline is this way or it could possibly end up being this way because Sarah and Adam are not around. But when they complete their mission, which we, we're assuming they're going to complete the mission by the end of the season, they're going to kill Vandal Savage, Rip Hunter's going to take them back to where they were, and it's going to work out for the best. So I think that it was pretty cool to see this archaic and crazy timeline, but it's cool to know that eventually when they go back, this is not the timeline that will be happening moving forward, we assume. Now, a version of this timeline could uh, could actually happen. It would be set in stone, but what we saw on Legends of Tomorrow and Star City 2046 was not the definitive timeline in the future. So that was pretty cool. So those are mostly my positive, great things on that front. But let's get to some of the negatives that I felt like was a pretty big disappointment. Um, so let's actually stick with Rip Hunter, and let's go to the negative about Rip Hunter. So the negative about Rip Hunter is that he was going over the top and telling Sarah... It doesn't matter what you do, okay? Uh, you have a connection with the city, that's fine. But it doesn't matter. This is not the timeline. It's not set in stone. So, like I said, there's a positive to this, but also it's a negative because he's acting like nothing can be done. We can't save Connor Hawk when he got captured in the middle of the episode. It doesn't matter. It's not going to matter once we complete the mission. So, Sarah was obviously, in my personal opinion, in the right and Rip Hunter was in the wrong. Now, Rip Hunter has started this mission, started the Legends of Tomorrow group. The show was created based on the idea of Rip Hunter wanting to stop Vandal Savage because Vandal Savage killed Rip's son and his wife, okay? Now, everyone on the team didn't know that when they signed up. 
but they officially said we'll stick with you once they learn that. Rip Hunter is only doing this. Now, he, yeah, Rip Hunter could be trying to save the world, but the first priority for Rip Hunter is to save his son and wife from dying from Vandal Savage. So that's the whole point. Sarah brings that up, and Rip says, you can't bring that up. You can't play that card. Of course Sarah can. Sarah has the right, and everybody on the Wave Rider has a right to, t to say to Rip Hunter, we know why you started this journey. We know why you started this mission. Because you wanted to kill Vandal Savage and stop him from taking your son and taking your wife away from you. You want to stop that, okay? Yeah, you might want to save the world afterwards, okay? Because if you stop Vandal Savage, that will prevent the world from being taken over by Vandal Savage and being destroyed by Vandal Savage. But we know the real reason why you're doing it is because of your family, okay? So let's be real here. So I didn't like the fact that Rip Hunter acted like he did. He acted like a child. He was acting over the top. I just didn't like how they were portraying that, so... Overall, I feel like that it, it was just, it, it was just some really, really, I say interesting writing for the character, but it just didn't play off well because it just showed him being just being kind of a dick, and I didn't like that at all. The next ne negative I want to get to, which is the biggest negative I have for this entire episode, even more so the Rip Hunter, was the love triangle they were trying to force with Jax, aka Half a Firestorm. Kendra Hawk, Hawk Girl, and Ray Palmer the Atom. I swear, this is the worst thing they have done on the show yet. And I want to say, before I continue anymore with this particular thing, thank God they stopped it, okay? Thank God Kendra put it into it immediately at the end of the episode. So I swear, if they bring this back up again, I will shoot myself. This was so out of nowhere, it made no sense. I tweeted about this in all caps. Please, no, stop doing this bullshit. It's getting out of hand. It was just ridiculous. Okay, I get it. They're on the wave rider. They're on this mission. You know, the, she's a she's a girl. He's a guy, and the other guy's a guy. But it just felt like they were forcing Jax having feelings for Kendra. It felt forced. It wasn't like slowly planting seeds and maybe there's some chemistry. Jax immediately just started to have feelings for Kendra. And then, of course, when Martin Stein's trying to help out Jax, his other half of Firestorm, and he tell and he talks to Ray Palmer about it, and Ray's like, I've never thought of Kendra that way. And then all of a sudden, as soon as, you know, Martin Stein says to Jax, I already I talked to him and he's and Ray's not feeling anything for Kendra. So go get her, Jax. And Jax leaves, and Ray comes in and tells Martin Stein after that, saying, I actually kind of like Kendra now. I'm like, Jesus, mother of God, stop this. I really hated this, guys. It made no sense. It felt like, to me, the writers had nothing better to do with these characters because it felt like, to me, they just wanted to put more screen. They wanted to have every character on Legends of Tomorrow, a part of the team, have a story have something going on in the episode so that's what it felt like to me they were just forcing it because it just made no sense it just felt too forced if you really wanted Ray and Martin Stein and Jax and freaking uh, Kendra to be a part of the episode, a part of Star City 2046, let them go out. Let them be a part of the world. Don't, don't keep them up in a ship. It made no sense. And like I said, and I'll say it again before we continue on to the last real big negative I have. It's not really big, but... Thankfully, Kendra put an end to it. Kendra said to Ray, I'm not really feeling the whole relationship thing, so let's not do that. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you so much for putting an end to this crap. The last negative I do want to get to, it's not as big as the first two negatives, but it's the fact that, that we didn't get to see enough Oliver Queen. Like I was mentioning earlier in the thing about the love triangle, it felt like the writers wanted to include everybody who's a part of the team on Legends to be a part of the episode in some capacity. And I personally believe if they wanted to, they should have brought... More of a team along with Sarah and uh, Sarah and Diggle Jr., John Diggle Jr., Connor Hawk, Rip Hunter, and all that kind of stuff, or, or whatever. Them doing something involved in the world, but have more screen time for Oliver Queen. Now, maybe Stephen Amell, who plays Oliver Queen, you should know that by now, by the way. If Stephen Amell, let's, let's say Stephen Amell didn't have enough time to do a bunch of scenes like they were planning, or maybe there was the whole plan, maybe he was his schedule was too busy. That's different, but I personally think they could have had another scene or two with Oliver Queen in it, and it would have been fine because they were building the hype. Oliver Queen's going to be on Legends, and he's literally only in the, the show for about four scenes. There's the scene when they first see him for the first time. Then there's this, well, no, technically five because the it cuts. It, the, the scene stops and goes to break and comes back in the same scenery, so I guess it counts as a, so five scenes. They see him. 
Hi, Sarah. Long time no see. Cut to commercial. Back. Uh, everyone, th everyone thinks you're dead. I feel, I feel, I, they are wrong. D put down the arrow, Diggle. You, you're embarrassing yourself. I mean, John, huh, sorry, cameraman. Uh, it reveals the John Diggle Jr. It's Connor Hawk. It's the same guy. And then you see Sarah come back once again to the arrow cave and gives Oliver the bow. And then Oliver is in the big fight scene, which is good. I'm glad they had him in the big fight scene. Um, and then, obviously, at the end, when he's back in the Arrow Cave with Connor Hawk, I really wish they would have had him more. They could have easily included him in more scenes. They could have brought him on the Wave Rider, whatever. But they didn't. They just kind of, you know, threw him in randomly. Like, oh, yeah, Stephen Amell, he, he's a part of this episode. Let's put him in there. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. It was just kind of, you know, they, they could have just did more with that front, but they just didn't do it. But overall guys star city is a good episode i really enjoyed it the negatives with rip hunter being kind of a dick and just you know so like you can't pull that family card on me it's crap and the love triangle which i'm glad they only they finished it it's not continuing in the next episode but the fact that they did it to begin with this is just annoying as shit and Stephen amell should have had more screen time but overall it was a good episode i really enjoyed the you know showing off the first for the first time of Stephen amell's uh older oliver queen but the episode could have been a lot better. But for what it was and for what we got, I felt like it was a pretty good episode. So there you have it, guys. Okay, let me take a sip of the drink, as I always say in these podcasts. And someone had to bring that up and <laughs> laugh at me for it. So anyways, let me take a sip of the drink, as I always do. And we'll get to the second topic, which is Zoom Revealed. Okay, so the second topic, as you know, is going to be Zoom Revealed. Spoiler warning. If you've not seen the newest episode of The Flash, King Shark, click away now. Don't listen to this. Don't listen to this part of the podcast. Stop. 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 Spoilers. Okay. Three, two, one. You gone? Okay. Let's get into spoilers. Zoom was revealed to be Jay Garrick, or what we assume is Jay Garrick, because there's been so many theories going on for the longest time since Zoom first showed up. Who is Zoom? Everyone's saying Henry Allen from Earth 2. Well, we know that's not right. Joe West from Earth 2. Well, Joe West from Earth 2 died on uh, part one of Earth, of the Earth 2 adventure. So, no. Then people brought up, well, Wally West, Earth 1, is addicted to speed. Like, not speed the drug, but he's addicted to racing and being faster and all this kind of stuff. So, maybe Earth 2 Wally West is the same way and maybe he's Zoom. Well, we know now for a fact that's not true. The thing is... What I really liked about this reveal is that, of course, well, they revealed it, and they revealed who it was, but they literally gave no more than just a face and a line. Well, this is a complication. You know, credits. So the thing is, is that they revealed who it was as Zoom. They didn't answer any questions. They didn't give anything. They didn't give nothing. And what I think that really tells to us is that, we don't know the full story. I don't think anybody knows the full story. Now, we have our theories. I started theorizing it was Jay Garrick. Like, the guy that was in the suit, the guy pretending to be Flash, the Flash from Earth 2, is actually Zoom. Well, from what we can tell, I don't know, a Jay Garrick who was injected with Velocity 9 that was on Earth 1 while this Earth 2 venture was going on, that Jay Garrick is dead. Or we assume that is Jay Garrick, Okay. When we got introduced to Jay Garrick's doppelganger, which is Hunter Zolomon from Earth-1, we assumed that was Earth-1. We don't... Earth-1, Hunter Zolomon, we don't know anything. Hunter Zolomon is Zoom in the comics. That's the name of Zoom is Hunter Zolomon in the comics. So when they dropped that name as being Jay Garrick's Earth-1 counterpart, I... Some people are some people are theorizing Hunter Zolomon was the guy on the bench that we got to see with the glasses on. That was Zoom. And people are saying that... The Jay Garrick, or the guy we think of as Jay Garrick from Earth One, that from Earth Two that came to Earth One that died in the episode, who got his who got, zooms went through his freaking chest with a hand and killed him. That he was a part of the plan with Zoom, or he had no idea who Zoom was. I just think it's just it's too convenient to me that the guy we assume is Jay Garrick, aka the Flash from Earth Two who's dead now, in the suit, who died and got dropped on the floor, and Zoom are the same-looking person. The theory that I've been hearing, and I'm kind of agreeing with, is that Zoom, the, not, excuse me, Jay Garrick, the guy that we've seen, his face, now we, now we see his face as Zoom, but he's also been Jay Garrick, that's, ne that's never been Jay Garrick. 
Okay, I'll get to who I think is in the in the mass and all that kind of stuff in the third topic. But I think that the person we were introduced to as Jay Garrick is not Jay Garrick. People are saying there are there's also a evil or a reverse Flash from Earth two, so that could be evil Jay Garrick or something like that. But I think it's just getting too complicated. I think that you have to give a definitive answer. Okay. Is the person in the mask, the zoom mask, the zoom, the zoom suit, is that Jay Garrick from Earth 2? And the guy that was killed was actually Jay Garrick from Earth 1? Or is the guy that we saw on the bench, Earth 2, Hunter Zolomon, and the guy that we got to see that says he's from Earth 2 never was from Earth 2? It's so complicated. It's so confusing. Because... It's like, do you believe the guy who died and who's in the mask and who is Zoom is Jay Garrick, or do you think everyone's been Hunter Zolomon? Some people are saying it's twins, that on both Earths, the guy who plays Jay Garrick, or Zoom now, had twins on both Earths. So there's, there's two different versions of these characters. So there's two different ones. So there's four of them total. There's twins on both Earths, okay? So... The theory that I've been hearing about the twins is that on both Earth, Earth 1 and Earth 2, both sets of twins were born and both were separated at birth. So there is a Jay Garrick on Earth 1, a Jay Garrick on Earth 2, a Hunter Zolomon on Earth 1, and a Hunter Zolomon on Earth 2. Okay? So there's been two sets of twins. Okay? So there are four versions of the character. I think that's too much. I think that is way too much. Okay? So when I get to this, the third topic, which is who is in the man in the mask... It will connect with the second topic, but I don't want to get too much into it because I think it's going to jump into the third topic, and I don't want to get there right yet. I just think that with what they did with the reveal is just mind-blowing because it just answers no questions. What it does is tell us that maybe at one point, Zoom was pretending to be Jay Garrick from Earth 2. It was infiltrating. Now, some people say that he never did, but I think that he might have. He might have pretended to be Jay Garrick from Earth 2, and it was just running around and pretending. Because what I was seeing is that, at some moments, the guy that we assume was Jay Garrick from Earth 2 that is now dead, and see, it's so confusing, <laughs> you know, Jay Garrick zoomed, it's, it's all the same person, basically. But whenever Jay Garrick, was we assume is Jay Garrick, got hit with the Velocity 9 and was wearing the Flash suit from Earth 2, at some moments, it seems, okay, he's had speed before, he's had the speed force, he's, he's able to run, and no problems. Then there's other moments where he'll crash, like he crashed running into uh, Star Labs, and he hit a wall. So that makes me think, well, did he ever have the speed force, or was it all a lie? It's so confusing. Um, but I think for speculation, okay... Speculation, just for Zoom, and then I'll get to more of a connective thing with Zoom thing with the man in the mask in the third topic, which will be a lot a lot easier to explain. But I think on the Zoom end, I think the guy that is Zoom is Hunter Zolomon. Whether it's the guy that was on the bench with the glasses when he revealed to Caitlin, that's my doppelganger from Earth One, Hunter Zolomon over there in the, in the glasses. I think that might that that was Zoom. I think. Maybe, maybe not. See, there's just so many theories. So, I think ultimately, Barry will find out, or I think that maybe Zoom will pretend to be Jay Garrick. That died, right? He'll put on the suit and come back through the portal and say he escaped from Zoom, right? He escaped Zoom. He was able to get, he was able to get free from Zoom, reach the portal, somehow open the portal again and get back through. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe the Flash comes through the portal Barry does, and Barry runs into Jay, but he's not wearing the Zoom suit, and he's wearing the suit, the Flash suit, and says he was, he was somehow able to escape Zoom, and he's able to pretend to be the Jay Garrick that died. And that's how he infiltrates back into Team Flash, essentially. I think that's what's going to happen with the character, because I don't know when they're going to find out who is under the mask, who is Zoom, but I think it's going to be a couple more episodes. Because I think them revealing it to us, the reason why they revealed it to just us as an audience and not to anybody on Team Flash is because they want us to theorize. They want us, the fans, to start speculating, what the hell is going on? And that's exactly what we're doing. We are speculating the crap out of what's happening right now. So we don't know. So I think that what the way they approached it by revealing who he was 
not only saying one line that gave no indication of who he is. He's like, shit, I killed my doppelganger. If he would have said, well, there goes my doppelganger, really dumb line, but it would have kind of made us speculate a little more, okay, so he killed the doppelganger, but is he the doppelganger of Jay Garrick or Hunter Zolomon? It's just, it's just so many things. Some people are some people are certain that well some people have said that even in interviews apparently from show producers that Hunter Zolomon was Zoom. I'm I'm thinking like I, I haven't seen that anywhere officially, so um, maybe this whole topic is pointless because maybe they did confirm Hunter Zolomon is Zoom, but I haven't seen it anywhere. So, but I think that ultimately it was a good reveal. I can't wait to see where they take it. I just think that it's going to be really hard to explain this to us if there if there are if there are a set of twins on earth one and earth two there are four jay garricks or two jay garricks and two hunter solomon all the same uh, actor that's gonna get a little too ridiculous too ridiculous four of the four versions of those characters oh stay away now let's get to the third topic which i'll jump right into right now which is who is in who is the man in the mask <laughs> I almost screwed it up there. Who is the man in the mask? This is connecting to the Zoom reveal. So, once again, spoilers. If you have not seen the reveal of who Zoom is, if you haven't seen the Flash Season 2 Episode 15 King Shark episode, click away now. You've been warned. Spoilers are coming for the Zoom reveal and who I ultimately think is in the, uh, the man in the mask. So, okay. So, the theory is that it's either Hunter Zolomon is Zoom or it actually is Jay Garrick lying and Jake Garrick who's been fooling the entire team for this whole time has turned out to be Zoom. He has been Zoom because Jake Garrick, the guy with the, the the actor Teddy Sears who plays Jay Garrick has never been in the same scene with Zoom until now when his body was dropped on the floor, but there's so many theories about that. The man in the mask is now a, a more interesting question because some of us were theorizing that the guy in the guy who is Zoom before the reveal was either Henry Allen from Earth 2, Joe West from Earth 2, that's debunked, uh, Wally West from Earth 2, and now the reveal is that it's been it's the same actor, and I'm really curious how they're going to answer it if he's Hunter Zolomon or another Jay Garrick from another Earth. I don't know. They're going to have to do some really deep explanation. Is that now the man in the mask, mask could be multiple people? I mean, it, at first it could be multiple people. But I think, ultimately, if it's an imposter or if it's Hunter Zolomon who's pretending to be Jay Garrick, the real Jay Garrick is in the mask. Because if you noticed that Jesse Quick was in a barred jail cell, Barry was in a cell that has glass pan, and he's, he was able to phase through it, right? Well, if you look at the cell that the man in the mask is in, and he has a mask on, which obviously make, prevents him from speaking... Uh, he has the same exact prison uh, with all these walls, and I think the mask will prevent him from phasing. So I think he's a speedster as well. But if he was a speedster, and if the man in the mask is actually the real Jay Garrick, which means that the guy who is playing Jay Garrick in quotes, who's now Zoom, Teddy Sears, that actor, that's not actually Jay Garrick. The real Jay Garrick is a guy we've not seen that we've not seen his face before. That that the guy who's in the, the man in the mask is a guy we've never seen his face before. He's the real Jay Garrick, the real Flash from Earth Two. That's what I think ultimately who it is. It could people have been saying it's Eddie Thawne from Earth Two. I don't know, but I don't think so. People are saying it's Henry Allen, it's Barry's dad from Earth One. That Zoom, whoever he is, Hunter's Allman, Jay Garrick, whatever. He captured Barry's dad from Earth-1 and put him in a cell and all that kind of stuff and put the mask on him. Now, if that's the case and that's true, then that makes – then that's going to – then that – what really debunks it is why – did because he can see out the mask, whoever it is. Why didn't the person who was doing the knocking when Barry was – was Barry was in prison and Jesse was in prison and they were able to, you know, do a little – five by four type thing in order to knocks or whatever is kind of like Morse code in a sense of getting letters. The person spelled out the word J J A Y. But if that was Barry's dad, wouldn't he have said Henry Allen? Then it was said, I'm Henry Allen pointing at me. But the guy just said J and he shook his head and Barry says, Jay Garrett didn't come over here. And he starts freaking out and getting mad and knocking on the window. He's like, ah, the guy, whoever it is. So, to me, 
seeing the reveal of who Zoom is, which we all assume, and I'm sticking with the theory of Hunter Zolomon. I'll just stick with it. Hunter Zolomon is Zoom, okay? I'm going to stick with that for the rest of this podcast for a couple more minutes until it's done. Hunter Zolomon is Zoom. Jake Eric died, okay? Hunter Zolomon somehow is a doppelganger, whatever. The guy in the mask makes more sense to be the actual Jay Garrick. The actual Jay Garrick. Not an imposter. The actual one that we've never seen his face before. Or the guy in the mask is actually the real Jay Garrick, who's the same actor, but his doppelganger, uh, from or, or his twin, or so many theories. But I think the real Jay Garrick, we've never seen his face before. He's in the metal mask. And there's a real reason, there has to be a good reason why he's in the same type of jail cell as Barry was. I think the metal mask, metal mask, is obviously to prevent him from speaking and just saying, oh, "I'm the real Jay Garrick," and like you've never seen me before, but I'm the real Jay Garrick, and he could speed around. I think the metal mask prevents him from using his powers and speaking. That's what I personally feel like because otherwise, you know, he could just reveal himself to be a speedster if he when Barry was imprisoned, but he was he didn't do anything. He just knocked the whole time. So I feel like that that's probably Jay Garrick, the real one, and he's been imprisoned. Um, some people also brought up that it could be uh, Barry's dad from Earth 2, but I, that would make no sense because Barry from Earth 1, I mean Earth 2 Barry, Earth 2 Barry is not a speedster. So that would make no sense. So the two possibilities that people have been speculating that I think is correct, or at least close to it as possible, with the reveal of who Zoom is, is that Henry Allen from Earth 1 is a possibility because you want to have leverage on the Flash. So that could be. But once again, if it was actually Henry Allen, wouldn't he have knocked out, I'm Henry Allen? He would have said, I'm Henry Allen. That's who I am. Knock, 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 knock. Right? But he didn't. So I think the ultimate thing is Jay, which is saying either Jay Garrick, the guy you trust, is not who he says he is. Or Jay, I'm Jay. But he didn't point at himself. So... They're being very vague, and I like that because if they would have just, if he would have been knocking and he would have said, "I'm Jay Garrick, I'm the real Jay Garrick," please, uh, who the real Jay Garrick, please stand up. The guy with the mask stands up, right? I think that if they would have just revealed that the guy in the metal mask is Jay Garrick and he says, "Jay, I'm Jay Garrick," pointing at himself, "I'm Jay Garrick," then it would have completely derailed the show in the sense of who Zoom is, who is Jay Garrick, who, who's the imposter. All this kind of stuff because they just do that. So they find subtle ways to give you hints, but it also, it basically, they give you a hint, but it raises a ton of more questions, which I think is smart. Some people are getting tired of them continuously, you know, just pushing this off. Now, the reveal is good, but some people had some controversy with the reveal. But I felt like that, you know, it threw me for a loop. I mean, I had the speculation, but I didn't think that it would I would actually be right, or one of my theories would be right. But the man in the metal mask has to be some t- sort of relation to everything, or else why would he be in there? Why would his face be covered? And ultimately, you know, why did he get upset by the upset by the word J? I mean, there's so many questions. Like, just what's the right answer? I guess is you know the real the real question is what is the right answer? Is the is Zoom actually Hunter Zolomon? The man in the metal mask is actually the real Jay Garrick, and the guy who died, who's on the floor wearing the flash suit, he's a another version of Hunter Zolomon, I guess. Who's to say? I don't know. A recent report that I read before I started the podcast saying that Barry Allen will not take the reveal of Zoom well. Really? So they're saying that Barry Allen is not going to take the reveal of Zoom well. I did not know that. That is a shock. I did not think that for a bit. Really quite shocked. Okay, guys, so that's the podcast. I think overall, you know, I'm excited to see what they do with the rest of the season for season two of Flash. But I'm hoping that they just start that they start answering questions soon. I need I need some answers. I need some answers. I don't need a lot of answers. I need some. Just need a couple. Just just get like if they could do when they come back from their break, if they can give me another little hint after the uh, title of the flash at the end of the episode they give me another 30 45 second clip and give me another hint the speculations will be driving crazy again what the hell did that hint mean what's happening now who is zoom who was the guy on the ground who's died who's in the metal mass so many things so there you have it guys that's the podcast thank you so much for listening to the podcast make sure you check in that link in the description to the playlist for my past podcast if you want to check them out thank you all for listening so much Peace out.